What's up, everybody? Happy Friday out there. Trey Griggs, Beta Consulting Group, and you are here for episode 113 of the Word on the Street, powered by Beta Consulting Group. Super excited for today's show. we got a great street crew. we got special guest Shannon Breen in the house here from Freight Vana here in just a little bit. But before we talk about all that, we got to give a little love to ourselves and to our sponsors. So do me a favor. Go over to betaconsultinggroup.com. Check out what we're doing for companies. Tell them their stories, helping them with their messaging, their branding, their content creation. And something special, everybody, we now have a swag store. Why? I don't know. Somebody said they wanted a t-shirt with my face on it. I thought, okay, what the heck? We'll do it. So go on over to shop.betaconsultinggroup.com. We got some awesome stuff we're going to talk about later in the, in the show. But use coupon code beta-go for 30% off your entire order during our grand opening. Love to have you join us with some really great stuff out there. We got some awesome things in the store, including, check this out. We've got onesies for little babies. We got t-shirts, got an awesome three-quarter uh, shirt. We got some mugs and water bottles. A lot of great stuff there. Want you to be a part of this community here at Word on the Street. So definitely check that out. Be a part of that. Support small business. Have a great time with that. We appreciate that. Also, shout out to our sponsor, Greenscreens.com. AI. Love what those guys are doing with dynamic pricing in the industry, helping provide actionable intelligence at the moment of buying for your team and making that uh, all that legacy information more um, available to everybody on your team, make it easier to buy and to win on the freight that you're actually winning. So check them out at greenscreens.ai or click on the link that Morgan's going to put into the comments today during the show and, uh, and click on that. That'll take you right to the landing page uh, for that I have for them so they know that I sent you. Also, want to give some love to our friends over at TAFS. These are the good guys in freight factoring. They're helping educate carriers, make sure they have all the resources they need to keep those wheels turning, especially those owner operators and small fleets out there. So check them out at TAFS.com or like I said, click on the link in the comments that takes you directly to my landing page with TAFS and uh, get started with them. They're going to help out in so many different ways. Keep those tires moving, uh, keep those trucks moving. And we appreciate all of that moving across the country. Also, everybody, it is Finish Strong Friday, which means that on Monday, normally we have Iron Minds with my boy Hayden Allred. Not this week. It is 4th of July, so take the day off. Enjoy time with your family. On Tuesday, though, at 6 a.m., join us for Iron Minds, which is a, a wonderful little uh, a little show with us. We're doing a little workout, talking mindset. The Freight Sensei is always there. Greg Roberts drops in a lot. Uh, a bunch of great people drop in. It's going to be a lot of fun. So a lot of good stuff coming up out there. Got some people in the audience today. Hayden Allred. Uh, got some great content as well. Make sure you're following him. He's present and waiting. We've got a nice little um, surprise later on in the show talking about UFC coming up. Okay, everybody, it is time to bring in the street crew. We've got a great crew today. We're going to talk about some fun stuff. Everybody, welcome the strongest man in logistics, my boy from Metaphor. Everybody give it up for Robert Beefcake Bane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I feel invisible. It's a hundred niggas in the spot. I will keep going. It's 85 just to walk on. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? How you doing? How you doing, man? You good? Life's good. Life's beautiful. Life is good, man. Always good to see you. Always good to see the bald mug. And I feel like I'm seeing a little bit more of the, the house today. You must not have yeah, kids in the house. Yeah, yeah. It must I'm be the, out. I'm in the dad chair right now. In the dad chair. I love it. Yeah, Relaxing, so chilling. Give, me, give my lower back a little bit of a rest. The uh, the work chair can uh, be <laughs> be happy just on it. And uh, th This area here seems to keep the dog calmer, so... She's been a little yippy here lately. So love it, man. Hey, always good to see you. Thanks for being on the show today. We're gonna have a great show. We got some things to talk about today. We got we AB5 do. we're we gonna do. talk about. Big, big some other stuff. Absolutely. Make sure we get to that on the show. It's gonna be interesting. A lot of a lot of decisions coming down that are impacting a lot of aspects of culture and economy. And that's definitely one of them. So we'll get Absolutely. to that one. All right. From Armstrong Transport up in the Boise, Idaho era uh, area. You know him as the Freight Sensei. Everybody give it up for our boy Scott Wantanabe. <laughs> Love it, man. Dude, that that might be like one of the things I look forward to most during the week is your walk-up song. I gotta say, that's so tight. I love it. What's up, brother? 
Are you on mute again? Man, you're on mute again. Dang it. This One is, week. We cannot. Hit it, <laughs> we cannot have. Wait, I think I had, last last week. I had it last we week. We had it last week. We, I did we have it last have, week. We cannot have a word on the street without Scott coming in on mute. Uh, it's it's like clockwork. It's so high. You know, you know being, on things, the, being live on the sales floor, I'm trying to avoid. A few things you can guarantee in life. Right. You can guarantee death, taxes, and Scott coming in on mute every week. That's how <laughs> it works. That's how it works. Every, Thank you. Awesome. Every week. How are you doing, man? Feeling patriotic today, you know, it's the nice. Friday before the birth of our nation, so. Got my Star, stripes and reproductive rights, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. That's well, a good one. All right, let's bring in the oh. next uh, member of the street crew real quick. Has, he's been absent for a while. He must be working really hard. Come to us from Mattson Logistics. Everybody go, give it up for Greg Roberts. Good song. Good song. I'm not going to lie. What's up, brother? How are you, man? Oh, doing doing well. Yeah, it's been busy, but busy's good. You know, looking forward to the long weekend. How's the progress coming on the ultra tough mud you got coming up? Um, so I, I ran into a little bit of a, a snag in Uh-oh. May and the beginning half of June. So I lost a couple of weeks of training there. Um, but I, I'm doing my first long run again this weekend. So I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, 50 K is still the goal. It will be the goal until, um, you know, the, the event is over. So that is the goal, but, uh, Whew. I don't know. I'm hopeful. I, I think I've, I've before I was feeling very confident. Now I'm, you know, 80, nah, you got it, man. Hey. I was in the Tough Mudder with you. I have no doubt you're going to crush that. Can't wait to hear that. Juwan, thanks for watching the show. Yes, amazing intro music. We're working working hard on here. Here's another amazing song. This one will get you up off your seat. Uh, from Butler, PA, although I'm not sure where she's coming from today, the president and founder of Zen Freight Solutions. Everybody, give it up for Raquel Packets. Uh-huh. <laughs> Love it. Gotta have a good time around here. What's up, girl? How are you? I am well. I'm well. We're starting our weekend a little early, headed off to my mother's to go install a dog fence. Not something I want to be doing and oh, it's 86 degrees, not... but have to get it done. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not fun. I thought you were going on maybe an RV trip or something really good. In two weeks. Hey, by the way, everybody. Check this out, everybody. So um, I learned this by shooting some video with Raquel. Her backyard is like legit. Wait till you see some of the videos she's putting on, on social. That is a real background. It is not fake. It is her her backyard. It's unbelievable. I, and I, uh, Raquel, I got to ask, it. is your devastatingly handsome co-pilot there? He is, yes, always. There he is. <laughs> there he is. He's always making sure that you know everything's good. The audio is set up. Oh, you know, yeah. The video looks good. Are you taking the dogs with you? Are the dogs with you? No, <laughs> no, no dogs. All right. All right. Very no. good. No dogs. <laughs> Just all right. Well, it's good to see you. Glad to have you on the show. We're gonna have a fun, uh, fun show today talking about some freight and all kinds of good stuff. All right. Uh, everybody coming to us from Denver, Colorado and talent solvers. One of the quiet assassins around here on the street crew. Everybody give it up from my man, Coleman Ruffin. Are you working? What kind of work? Uh. Uh. Are you wearing glasses? What? Oh, I found these bad boys last weekend and I had to show them off a little bit. They're glasses with a visor on there. So I'm, oh, I'm full fledged good. ready for the fourth. Oh, that's huge. That's big. Right. Right. I love them. That's the way they put Trey's face on the What's... side. Perfect. Yeah. Those are, those are straight out of Back to the Future right there. I love that. That's uh, Oh, yeah. Solid. They're great. Really I absolutely love them. I won't warm the whole show because it's hard to see, but I had to, I had to show them off a little bit. How's everything in Denver, Colorado? Everything good? Good, man. It's great. 80, like, like Raquel, 85 and sunny. It's hard to beat. Weather's good there. It's not uh, not a bad spot at all. Now, I'll tell you yeah. somewhere where it's typically hot. Although here today, it's not quite as hot as down in Phoenix, Arizona, where our special guest today is coming from. He is the co-CEO and founder of Freight Vana, one of my favorite people on the planet. Incredible leader, incredible CEO. And uh, he's got some of the best office decor as well. Everybody, give it up for our special guest today, Shannon Breen. Shannon, what's up, brother? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good, man. Appreciate it. Hey, I take this literally everywhere. 
I'm telling you, I might, I might as well, you might as well put me on payroll. I don't know. We got to talk about this because I'm, <laughs> I'm everywhere. I'm out there. Uh, Brandon, what's up, man? How are you doing? You good? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for having me with the crew. Um, I, you know, turned in the, the, the brand swag for the uh, American colors like Scott today. So just trying to, trying to represent for the, for the fourth. Nice. I love that. Hey, tell everybody real quick, a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Freight Vana. What are you guys doing over there? Yeah, doing a lot. Um, pretty talented crew, uh, growing fast. We passed our one year uh, a couple of weeks ago, early June. Uh, we focus on technology services, uh, logistics support, and, and then we've got a quick growing uh, trailer fleet that we're rolling out throughout the country to kind of support the small truckers and the shippers looking for different options with, with trailer capacity. So a ton going on here, Trey, but an amazing first year and we're uh, blown and going as we, uh, we go in here into year two. So. No, I love, I love hearing what you guys are doing. And you know, you guys are doing, we're seeing a lot of trailer pooling right now. We're seeing some kind of Airbnb of trailer pooling. Um, I know that the guys over at TAFs are encouraging, you know, um, uh, carriers to buy more trailers and to, to have that available just to ease some of the, the challenges getting in and out. When did that become a part of the freight bond strategy of, Hey, we're going to have our own trailers as well as the brokers that we're doing. Talk a little bit about that. From the get go. Right. I think, you know, we, we work for one of the largest uh, trucking logistics companies in the country. Um, kind of stood up that program and platform, you know, from about 2000, late 2017, early 2018, saw what it could do, uh, wanted to, to take it even to the next level and, and, and even improve on it. So uh, when we started building the idea, the business plan for Freight Vana, we knew that um, a, a trailer pool of that size and scale was something we wanted to build upon and um, huge investment, right? But that's why we've got a team with a lot of experience because it's 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 more than just uh, spreadsheets and margin. Like you, you've got to have an operational uh, appetite to take on that type of work. And so our team's built for that. We got that experience, and so I think that's what kind of sets us apart, Trey. Yeah, well, that and just the fact that you guys are uh, just special people. Um, not to lie, I mean, the content's great. It's a lot of fun. That's uh, that's, that's kind of where it's at. From a from a, a trailer pooling standpoint. How hard is it? And, and this is where I'm not in that seat every day. So I just want to ask the question, act like I didn't let you guys talk. But how hard is it to get uh, you know care, customers to kind of buy into that idea of, hey, we're going to position trailers. We're going to give you time to load them. We're going to you know use power only units to come pick them up and things like that. Like, what was that process like? And has that been pretty fruitful? Yeah, I would say customer adoption is pretty easy. That's that's really not the hard part of the equipment. Uh, when you run that level of equipment, I think Greg can probably attest to this in, in his world the the cost the efficiencies right and no real shipper is going to necessarily drive your network efficiency and but you now you've got 40 50 60 customers and now you've got to keep all of that moving so i think the efficiency and then like the securitization become these massive lifts um, if you want to run assets at that level and so i'd say you know, back to your question trey shipper customer adoption absolutely there small carrier adoption desire absolutely there but financially, efficiently, uh, and safely, how do you deliver something that makes all of that come together? That's where the real challenge lies, my opinion. Yeah, well, it's way above my pay grade. And the reason why I, I was in brokerage for six months and decided it was not the place for me. <laughs> uh, I should just spend time with smart people that know way better uh, about that than I do in this regard. Hey, we got one more guy uh, in the uh, in the green room who wants to come in. Uh, should we let this guy in? Uh, he's got great content. He's uh, a decent guy. Always has a lot of good things to say. I think we're going to let him in real quick. Everybody give it up for my good friend, Hayden Allred. Oh, I've stopped on it. Actually, we got to keep this going. got to keep it going. You know, it's amateur hour over here, everybody. That's kind of how it works. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. It's just better having you in here than in the comments. I'm not going to lie. It's better having you in the room. That's for sure. So where do you feel like, um, you know, Shannon, from your perspective, you know, you guys obviously started Freight Vana to do something different. Um, where do you feel like, um, you know, this is headed for you guys? And you're like, are, are, have you already pivoted a little bit from your initial plan or does this plan kind of working the way you thought it was going to work? No, I think the plan works the way we want, right? I think we're going to be a team that I told my team all the time, we're going to be a team that grows, climbs, acclimates, climbs again, right? I, you know, you and I talked about it offline before, but you know, you watch like the Kobe stuff and it's like, Hey, you don't get, you don't get to just jump to the top of Everest, right? You got to climb, you got to earn, you got to earn that, that, that reward. Um, and I think in business, it's interesting. You see some of these companies, it's almost like they get ascended to the middle or the top of Everest, right? And they have a story about it, but 
but they, they didn't do the time to acclimate. And now you're seeing some of that struggle. So for us, I'd say we're on brand, we're on path. Um, it's a hike, it's a journey. Uh, it's a mid to long term journey. Uh, no one here is really too concerned about uh, the shine or the raises or the valuation is really about building a infrastructure. And so uh, we're, we're on that journey. Yeah. Getting everybody on the same page when it comes to that is I think, you know, the, the, the power of what you do and what your team does, your executive team, you guys have um, a great grasp of that. And your team seems to be responding really, really well to that. So it's been a lot of fun to watch, watch you guys on social and putting content out there and, uh, and just displaying your culture and, and all that. Speaking of which the content you guys have put out, I, I just, I, I keep going back to this. Josh Bree said on standing out one of the episodes, you guys haven't spent any money on recruiting <laughs> and yet you don't seem to have any trouble finding great team members to, to join your team. Talk about the value of, of what you guys have done on the marketing side to, to kind of help out on the internal recruiting and the, the messaging and branding. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a completely different life from the past, right? When you work for a publicly traded multi-billion dollar company, it's like almost the brand sells itself, right? And, and, yeah. But part of that is you, there's things you don't do. And part of that is outside the box, maybe a little bit grittier marketing program. There's a lot more rules, a lot more red tape. Um, so coming into this world, right, we start off square one. We know we've got to go big, bold, creative, fun. Like, you know, a lot of the folks here, right, are, support us, right? And we get a lot of people that just, hey, we like what you're doing. Keep it up. Like you're, you're changing the game. You're pushing the bill. You're challenging that status quo. And so for us, we knew we had to do that because, you know, it's really hard to start a business. As you know, Trey, you've, you've done the same thing. You're on that journey. Um, and so when you're not working for a legacy brand with 70, 80 years of experience behind you, like how do you, what do you want to be and how do you build it quickly? Um, on the marketing front, we get people all the time that reach out just all over the country. We just interviewed a, a gal from Georgia, right? And she's, she's, she was looking at relocating potentially from Georgia just because she liked what we were putting out and seemed like a, a group of people that she'd want to spend um, her career with. And I, I just think that's, that's pretty interesting when you start to see that kind of start to become even not just Phoenix, right? Where our HQ is, but now other people are like, Hey, what if I would have come to Phoenix? Could I work with your team? <laughs> what a great problem. What a great problem to have a great question for somebody to ask, uh, which is amazing. You know, Coleman, you're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of movement in the labor market with a lot of the layoffs we've seen um, several companies announcing more layoffs. Some of those are not necessarily in the States, but they're, they're moving out. But you know, when you, when you see a, a brand where people are willing to willing to move, not asking for relocation, but like, Hey, I think I might move there to be a part of what you're doing. That's pretty special. How often are you seeing that in, uh, in some of the, the, the companies that, that are out there? Oh, all the time. And, and Shannon, kudos to you and the, and the team over there, because as people are making transitions out of the market, <clears throat> excuse me, the brand is the first thing that they're thinking of. Like, hey, if I'm going to be making a move, where do I want to go? And seeing the content and, and the great culture that you all have built, that sets you night and day above a lot of the other companies that are out there that are maybe a little bit more rigid or stagnant in some of their marketing. So I know we talked a little bit about it a couple of weeks when Josh was on. And, and again, kudos to you and the team, because that's really setting you aside from, from a lot of companies that are out there. I got a question too. How many of those are coming from say like Wisconsin or Minnesota in like November, December, where Arizona just looks <laughs> real nice about that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good call, Greg. We, you know, you do have to take into the, the four months of summer here, right? And so if you don't like the sunshine, you don't like 110, then it may be a struggle. But like I tell friends and family, like when you live in Phoenix, unless you're building houses, you're doing, you know, you got a landscaping job. Like we, we are working in air conditioned environments. We do take air conditioned cars <laughs> to work. We get home to our air conditioning. So there's not like, not like walking through the desert with, you know, water in our hands trying to survive from a corporate perspective. <laughs> so, uh, but it is hot. No, no doubt. Yeah, it gets pretty brutal there, but, uh, you know, you get up early enough or maybe late enough, you can get in some golf and it's not too, not too brutal. And the cost goes down considerably in that regard. So, um, it's good. Hayden, I got a question for you. You've been watching Freight Vaughn online, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? The, some of the stuff they're putting out. It is. Cause I feel, you know, that there's, especially being in our industry, it's very outdated. The marketing is stale. I almost fell asleep explaining it. You know what I'm saying? So it's been, <laughs> it's always entertaining. Anytime they come out their, their, their logo, their brand itself pops and it kind of catches the eye. And then there's the content that's being pushed and the consistency of it. You got to love it. Yeah. Shane, you got to make sure this, this, uh, this woman from Georgia is not coming to Phoenix just to do some TikTok dances with Josh Breeze and the crew, <laughs> you know, that, that's not, not what it's all about. 
Well, you saw the news right on TikTok and some of the questions and then some funny people like put messages out like, what are you guys going to do if this were to happen? You know, if TikTok were to get censored or whatever, and we're like, I'm sure we'll find a different path. Yeah, but, you'll uh, find a different way. For yeah, the time 100%. being, we'll, we'll keep running. Yep, 100%. Well, let's get to something uh, in the industry, a little bit of freight news. So we have the AB5 situation that Robert brought up earlier. Um, he obviously had to jump off the call, unfortunately, couldn't be on it. But we have that going on. Um, we've got uh, some of the things that are happening where uh, you know Biden signed the law to bring down shipping costs. I don't know if that's going to actually happen or if that was just more of just a suggestion, uh, to be honest with you, in terms of it's going to have any teeth and that kind of stuff. What do you guys see in the marketplace right now? Where are we at uh, with rates? Where are we at with capacity and freight volumes, inventories? Uh, some inventories seem to be high. Others are not quite as high. Um, what are you guys seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, we recently we've seen, you know, you get a lot of these freight waves and DAT kind of coming out with their reports every week. And they're talking about the rates dropping, 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 um, less inventory to be be moved. But then you look across the, the ocean and you're looking at, okay, what's coming back over from China? It's like the bottleneck doesn't ever go away. It just moves from one, you know, from... <laughs> California over to China and then now it's coming back so you just you wonder how long some of these suppressed rates may may last and you know what's gonna really happen in three months or so and you know they're saying that the inventories are going to be lower but are they really and is there still going to be that need to get stuff off the west coast that's kind of the, the biggest area that you know I think drives a lot of the factors right now yeah, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what happens with that in terms of uh, the, the demand and what's going on with that. You also think about inflationary pressures. You also think about the people that are getting laid off. I think people are going to be able to find work um, because there's still a lot of work out there. Um, just repositioning of where they are. But is that going to impact demand a little bit? Um, it's summer. People are still you know, traveling. Uh, they're still buying hot dogs and hot dog buns for this weekend uh, to celebrate the 4th of July. I mean, I don't know. It just almost feels like it's kind of this like uh, this back and forth game a little bit where there's really not a, a set way of where the market's going. It's just kind of constantly reacting and responding to what's happening out there. So it, it's it's uh, it's pretty interesting what's going on right now. What else are you guys seeing? I can say that in the flatbed markets, um, it's pretty typical. You know, every every year it's pretty seasonal. At the end of June, we slow down until the 4th of July comes through and then we start to pick back up about the mid of July. Um, I've seen it. We post the load and our phones blew up. I was like, oh my God, it's back. Right. Like it's been forever <laughs> since that's happened. And I was sitting next to John. He's like, what is happening? Your phone's like nonstop. <laughs> it's been like since pre COVID, I swear, since that happened. So that's a great sign. Um, it's just the balance, right? The, the, the influx of, of how the freight market goes. Yep. And now we got the Supreme Court who's uh, making some big headwaves, uh, big news uh, headlines this past two weeks in several different areas. One is that they uh, decided not to um, uh, take on the AB5 case, which uh, keeps the lower court's um, injunction in place, if I'm thinking about that correctly. Um, and it kind of puts the, the, the owner operators and contractors in, a, in an interesting spot here in the near future. What do you think is going to happen with that? How's that going to impact things? Anyone? I think it's anyone's guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be, it might be. Yeah, I don't know. The you were saying I forget who we had on there talking about it's not a recession; it'll be a repurpose where all these owner operators that are coming into the market new, maybe they're going back to their their previous lease to get back to that some of that, some of that contract stuff, um, with that dedicated stuff that they couldn't get. Uh, as, the or they, I guess sometimes they say they they didn't really try to get it because. Spot markets were in their favor, but not like the spot market is not in their favor. They have to actually look for that dedicated stuff. And if they weren't out there creating those relationships with with their brokers or their shippers in their area, that's not that's not going to happen at this point because they should have did it before. So that repurposing is you know, something yeah. that they might want to think about. Yeah, and my, I would add, I think you know the larger companies are probably really in war rooms this week trying to figure out okay if this comes to bear right because let's follow the money right the the plaintiffs the plaintiffs attorneys are going to be the ones that sets the stage and the bigger you are right the, the, the bigger the opportunity for the plaintiffs attorney so no shock right your larger companies which large footprints of owner operators and there's plenty of them in california have been probably if if they've been prepping appropriately some contingency plans um, but you're going to talk about conversions to maybe company uh, employee. You got to, you know, make sure you've got the right structure and you've had, you know, you probably, they probably have a list of owner operators that are maybe willing to switch over um, in this market. It probably benefits the companies, right? Because 
go back to Scott's point. If you were going to do this eight months ago and you tell owner operators, hey, you got to become a company employee driver and be able to do this, or you've got to go find other business, you're going to have all these people jump up and be like, oh, I'll just go run my own business because at $4 a mile, who can't, right? Now, the problem is we're not in that market now. We've got all these other pressures now. The market's changed dramatically, especially the spot market now. And so when you now hang that flag, like, hey, are you interested in being a company driver? You're going to have a lot larger portion of people that will will answer that bell. And, and I have that experience back on my, my previous life, right? With driver hiring and recruiting at one of the nation's top trucking companies. Undoubtedly, the, the, the tides, the market tides drive the recruiting efforts. And so in that type of a tide, you'd have a better opportunity to convert people over to being company employees because the other opportunities in the market are definitely not as interesting uh, based on the fall and the cost and the rising fuel fuel prices. So, yeah, it's, I'm it's interesting. You talk about the the drivers w going from, you know, company drivers to owner operators a while ago. I remember there was a conversation about, you know, how there's not really this driver shortage because look at all these new MCs that have been given out. Well, what was happening is exactly what you're describing, Shannon, is that the, the drivers were going from being company drivers and they said, well, I want the whole piece. So they moved over and opened up their own MCs. And then now is that, is that going to stay the, the fact is, are they just going to go back and we're going to hear, Oh my God, there's this huge constraint because all these MCs are going out, but is it really just the same pool of drivers moving yeah. back to the companies? Just one point, I'd like to other people's thoughts on that too, but that's the interesting thing. So the largest fleets in the country, you know, if you really follow them closely, you do the analysis, you see like what they report out on a quarterly basis. You know what they never share, Greg? Seated truck count. They just tell you how many trucks they own. They don't tell me or how many are <laughs> seated. They don't tell me how many are leased. So when you want to get a real feel and flavor for that, even when you track large publicly traded trucking institutions, what you can never tell from that public release is how that really works its way through the system because they intentionally don't share it, right? And yeah, so very true. I think it's a, a funny uh, aspect of the market when you think about publicly traded, like, oh no, everything, right? Full transparency, it's like, but you don't share the one stat, which is like, you have a manufacturing machine that is created of widgets and you're just telling me how many are, are you own, not how many are actually working. Right. And so to your point, that's what we never really see. So when this happens, because, you know, I've seen that in my experience, that's exactly what happens behind the scenes. To your point, you're not getting net new as much as you're getting transitory uh, uh, opportunities between between the driver segment. Yeah, it seems like that's, that's pretty common. The drivers just kind of go from one company to another and you just see that movement around. I'm curious if if, you know, if put to the choice of become a company driver or, or start your own company in this environment, how many of them would maybe just park it for a while, just like just step out for a while and do other things? It's summer, maybe do construction. That's a common one as well. Are there, are there enough that would do that, that it would make an impact? Or do you think the pressure right now is so strong that they would go for that, you know, becoming a, a company driver? The safety blanket. Go for the company driver, at least what, what I would think, right? It's in, it's kind of like everybody said, it's almost like a, a revolving door of the same pool of people of like, hey, during this market, I'm going to go work for a large kind of corporation company. And then when the market is better and more in their favor, hey, let's just go ahead, like Greg said, open up a new MC, start setting things up and just continuing that revolving door. Yeah. And it definitely doesn't do uh, a, a, any service to the fact that we do need more drivers, you know, that we still need more drivers in there. It's just kind of, it's just kind of juggling the same balls. It's not throwing new ones in and, uh, and adding to the mix, which, uh, which seems like the problem, it's just kind of pushing the problem around. Yeah, Shannon. Yeah. I just say, so like I saw a presentation from Rebecca Brewster, right? She's the president, I think COO at Atri, right? And she has some amazing stats for like, you talk about following this trend, right? And so the issue with trucking is compared to other, you mentioned, you know, um, construction you mentioned some other indices right like we the trucking's in track if you look at like age groups between like 40 and 60 like pretty on par with other industries where trucking struggles as soon as you go to that 18 to 30 it's way below way below construction it's way below retail it's way below just the overall average market and that that is the bogey that for the next three five seven ten years is going to impact trucking from a capacity standpoint, it's obviously why everybody's pushing the automation buttons because there is such a degradation between the overall average and the 18 to 30 bucket that people are concerned what what how, who is going to drive a truck 15 years from now, 10 years from now. Right. And so 
uh, really interesting stats from that group, but it was really cool to see how that segmentation worked in the marketplace for drivers specifically. Yeah. And along those same lines, I, you know, I think that we do a really bad job as an industry of marketing, being a truck driver, you know, and, and, and making it more appealing, making it more sexy, making it something that people might want to do. Um, it's almost like uh, I saw something where there was a, a poll or, or uh, maybe it was a, just an interview. I can't remember, but they, they asked parents, would you be, would you feel proud if you're kidding up as a truck driver? And the overwhelming answer was no. Because it's just viewed upon as kind of a fallback or something that, you know, you do, you do if nothing else works, as opposed to something where, you know, if, if, a, if, a, if a kid coming out of high school or, or currently college, because they can't drive at 19, 19 years old, but someone out of college came out and started driving a truck with no family and no, no necessarily responsibilities, they can make pretty good money in a couple of years doing that and, and see the country and have fun. But we don't, we don't really market that. We don't really talk about that. You know, we don't tell that story as an industry. And I think that we do a huge injustice to ourselves by not talking about that story, not going to colleges and recruiting care, why are care companies not going to colleges and getting people to drive who maybe want to own their own company someday, because it's almost like it's just not accepted. It's almost like it's not cool. It's not whatever. I think we just, we definitely miss the mark when it comes to that. It's going back to branding, right? I mean, just like we were talking about earlier. With everything Ray is Bonner, brand, Coleman. Everything is brand. Everything is brand, right? <laughs> I mean, if, if you go to anybody and you say, hey, tell me what you think a truck driver is, right? I, I'm not trying to stereotype here, but they'd be like somebody that's a little bit overweight, probably not the healthiest person that's out there. But that's not the case nowadays. There's so many people that are like Dr. Uh, Monera, right? Looking after and trying to inject. Dr. Monera. <laughs> just call him Mark. <laughs> yeah, Mark. I know, right? <laughs> trying to go fancy titles here. But it's, it's the exact Mark, same man. type of thing. Like anybody, you go say, hey, what do you want to do with your career? I can almost guarantee 99.9% .9 of the people aren't saying, I want to be a truck driver. But Very few. you can change yeah. that stereotype around what the average person is doing. I mean, I know you posted something not too long ago, Trey. Hey, it's a great way to see the country. I yeah. know a couple of people that used to be truck drivers and like, it was a phenomenal experience. You got to see so many different aspects of the country, see different cities and, and really travel. And again, after five years, if, if they want to make a transition, but that there's so many good things that come with it at the same time. Yeah. And it used to be a lifestyle. That was kind of the, the yeah. appeal. It's kind of the lifestyle of being on the road and seeing the country and all those kind of things. And we've definitely lost that, but we haven't re we haven't repackaged it or rebranded it in a way that makes it, makes it interesting and exciting. And that's now, that's important. now is the time because pre COVID, you were either in logistics or you just accepted it for what it was. You just show up to the grocery store and stuff is there. And that's, that's just how that goes. Like you don't understand supply chain to the common person that doesn't work actively in this industry. Well, because it became such an effect, you know, we were impacted by it in the capacity constraints, everything else going on supply chain, the common people start, it's news. I mean, it, it's, it's a constant flooding now because we are in this unprecedented time to where it's affecting everyone. You don't just show up in your grocery stores are full. And I think because of that now, it's like now is the time to push the significance in like, being a truck driver, it's literally, especially the owner operators, the small fleets are what keep this country running. Mm -hmm. Without them, 100%. We, we die. We don't get access to the resources we need in a convenient way. Our lifestyle is gone. You know, so I think now yeah. it's something to be revered and like there's honor in that and, and really how important and essential they actually are to our infrastructure and life as we know it. That is so true. And not to bring humor to that, but can you imagine all of us trying to become farmers? make our own food. <laughs> It'd be pretty hilarious. Everybody's back there trying to till the ground. Nobody knows sure. what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We don't, we'd all lose weight. <laughs> but, but Trey, yeah. I hate this point too, right? Think about like, you talked about the job um, and, you know, having some experience, like what are you doing to cater to that 18 to 30 segment? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's talk simple stuff. Like, I mean, I'll tell you my house, right. With my kids and that the one, the one way that, you know, I can impact my entire family is just based on my Wi-Fi speed. Right. So, <laughs> um, I, I say that like kiddingly, but at the end of the day, like think about how many fleets are out there that don't have Wi-Fi enabled for their, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to cater to a 24 year old to drive truck, but like, Hey, do you have Wi-Fi capabilities in your trucks? Absolutely not. We haven't had that in 20 years. Cool. Yeah. Once again, Hey, there's an expense, but can you afford not to have your trucks filled? Right? Like, so there, there's all this stuff that's emerging and changing that I think legacy trucking institutions and or small owner operators need to reconsider if they want to grow their fleets. Think about the, the difference, like try to go tell your teenager or anybody that has kids right here that's listening, like go tell them we're going to do something, but we're going to go move to a house without Wi-Fi. Just tell them you're going to move, but we won't have Wi-Fi in the new house and then see how your family reacts to that decision. Now, now go tell that same 20 something year old person you're going to have a job and you're going to be on the road and you're going to be by yourself and you don't have Wi-Fi. Like it's really sometimes 
some simple stuff that we kind of skirt over, but those are the types of things that people need to think about in their cost structure and how they cater to that, that different type of driver in the market. Yeah. And it only takes one person to change the whole thing. That, that somebody come up with that idea and, and market that idea and get it out there. I often think back to my DAT days up in Portland, Oregon, where we, we heard the story about Jubit's Truck Stop. If you've never been to Jubit's Truck Stop in Portland, Oregon, you should go. It's still there. It's right by the Columbia River. But what Al Jubit started to do was he started to have warm meals for drivers, warm showers, live entertainment. And so drivers wanted to stop at his truck stop because it gave them life on the road. And this is back in the 70s change the whole landscape of trucking and the, what a truck stop you know, you know should offer and so now you see truck stop with restrooms you see them with restaurants attached to you know to provide warm meals and things like that it just takes one one person out there who works in an asset based company to say we're going to do that and we're going to market that we're going to we're going to push the envelope and it's going to change the way that, that those types of little decisions are made to where it becomes standard you guys remember back in the day like when our parents would buy a car and air conditioning was optional you know, you had to decide if you want to pay more for that. I mean, now it's standard because that's kind of what we come to expect. And if we did something like that, like Wi-Fi and trucks and it becomes standard, then something like that, you know, changes the whole landscape of trucking for the younger generation, which that's really valuable. It'd be huge. All right, everybody, we're going to transition away to something else. So it is 4th of July weekend. Uh, and just in case you weren't aware, it is July. We are at the midpoint of the year. And so I put a little poll Happy out. Bobby about Bonilla about day. Happy Bonilla Day. <laughs> Happy $1 Little million dollar paycheck day. Oh man, I've got better hope he lives to be a hundred. That's going to, although a million bucks in 50 years may, might not be worth a whole lot. Uh, you never know. Um, so we put a poll out there to see what people thought about 4th of July. So let's go ahead and show the people what we got. Here we go. Let me share the screen. Um, Shannon, this is the part of the show that usually goes drastically poor uh, from a production okay. standpoint. This is the amateur hour here. All right. 4th of July. Question number one, is 4th of July your favorite holiday? Only two people that responded said yes. Everybody else said no. What are your favorite holidays, by the way? What do you guys got? What's your what's your favorite holidays? It's my, it's my number two. For Christmas, for sure. Everybody. Christmas. Christmas. But okay. This is definitely number two. No one thinks Thanksgiving one is the one favorite holiday. Yes for I'm, I'm I'm a really? Yeah, that so, one's a it's a double edged sword because it's a day of misery but enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no I mean, I, I usually end up slaving over a couple turkeys and slinging myself in the kitchen, but that's what I love. Uh, that's what I do. So, Going to but, a yeah, I mean, Fourth of July. I think I have a have still have a hand a scar on my hand somewhere from the last <laughs> Fourth of July, maybe three years ago. I should have seen yeah. that picture. Favorite holidays is a tough one. I mean, they're all good, right? Most of them are pretty good holidays, but my favorite, I think, is Memorial Day uh, for several reasons. Um, my parents were, my, my, my dad was in, in the military, my grandpa was in the military, uh, fought in the war. And of course, Indy 500 is on Memorial Day weekend. So it's just a great weekend. It's the start of summer, great weather. I'm a Memorial Day kind of guy. All right. Question two What are your favorite foods to eat on 4th of July? Most people are loving hamburgers and hot dogs. We got some corn on the cob. That's one of mine. Ribs, got six people with ribs. Uh, not a ton of people going with potato salad. Look at that. Zero people like potato salad. I'm so glad to hear that because I can't stand potato salad. I don't know if it's the texture <laughs> or what, but man, there's only one off. recipe I can eat potato salad is my mom. So luckily she's yeah. bringing it over this weekend. That's nice. It's yeah. Usually not, same, a, same. not a huge fan of that. How many, salad either. how many are going to be grilling out this week? Oh yeah. yeah it's almost like it's, I mean, you, know. you left off grilled chicken though. Well, I got wings in there, but you're right. I got left off grilled chicken. Is grilled chicken a Fourth of July thing? You don't grill wings. You don't grill wings, but you know, I what? started to tell well, you. Grilled wings I, are phenomenal. Have you never done that before? I've never really. I've never had grilled wings. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, never. Full wings. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, see, I looked at a list of top Fourth of July. I looked at several lists, and and grilled chicken was never on any of them, Greg. So you're well, kind you of alone. Those on this seasoned one. ones from Costco, they're pre-seasoned. You throw those on the grill. Those actually grill. <laughs> I didn't see the, 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 the season legs. Cut up the chicken breast, put it in a brine, let it sit for a few hours, throw it on the grill. All right, all right. Chicken okay. sandwiches. Okay. okay, all right. That's very good. All right, I'm going to have to try that. Well, I may have to give that one a shot. I've never done it before, but may have to try to pull that off. All right, question three. Will you watch Nathan's hot what dog eating competition? Uh, I in that, participate in that. You want to participate in that? Is that what you said? Let me try it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we'll do that. Oh, maybe, we should do, maybe we should do a street crew. We should do a word on the street hot dogging competition. We'll set the timer and just let everybody go at it. <laughs> I, got, I got this trophy right. for a reason. Okay, Scott, here's here's the deal. When 4th of July lands on a Friday, we will have the word on the street hot dog eating competition. Hold on. Wait, how, did you have a hot dog eating competition? What is that for? It wasn't. So we probably had okay. three different food eating competitions. So we've had a stew pie eating, 
like a little day. I've got them both. Uh, and then if we had a chip, <laughs> those chip cookies, I ate four of those in 18 minutes. Those are huge. Hayden, you bet your match. You bet yeah. your match, Hayden. So, uh, yeah. I better watch out. <clears throat> All right. Well, then, I was born a fat the next kid. Next question, though, Hayden. You must have. <laughs> All right. Next question. How many hot dogs do you think you could eat in 10 minutes? Uh, nope. One person said 11 to 15. Hayden, was that you? Uh, no I, didn't, I, I couldn't get to the poll and I was trying to click on the comments, but I wasn't. Uh, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. I could easily me. do one and a half a minute, like a breeze. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you not- could do one and a half hot dogs a minute. So you're thinking oh, 15, yeah. you could you could plow in 10 minutes. Well, that's not going to do you very good in Nathan's hot dog eating competition. Greg, what were you going to say? No. I'll say that, that 11 to 15 was me. I actually did it with a buddy in college. And oh, you've it done was- it. Congrats. A miserable <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I can't believe I think the world record's like 68 or something, or seven, somebody looked that up. What's the world record for Nathan's hot dog in competition by Joey Jaws? Where they got dogs Joey Chestnut. Yeah. Yeah. Joey Chestnut. Water and just... <laughs> oh man, that's that's uh can't I can't imagine how many but somebody looked that up. It wasn't it enjoyable. Oh, yeah. Ooh, 76. 76 in 10 minutes. I mean, I can't I still can't even I mean, that's why we watch, right? Because it's just still, it sounds unbelievable. It doesn't even sound possible. Just, what a poster child for America. We got country <laughs> <times. laughs> in competition. Yeah. We just, 14 yeah. times. He's won that thing 14 times. You took it from Kobe boy. Oh, man. It's crazy. Yeah, we have we have people, we have countries that they don't need food, and we're just eating it just to see how much we can eat in one. As a competition. <laughs> well, I would enjoy a competition. In I would enjoy slices of pizza. I used to do that back at the old pizza, the CC's Pizza Buffets back in the day, you know, trying to get 20 slices down. I would enjoy that maybe. But hot dogs, I just, mm, that's a lot of a lot of unknown meat in my belly. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. <laughs> All right. Question five. What will be your relationship with fireworks this year? One, we have nothing to do with it. One person said that. Nine said they'll be watching fireworks. One's going to be igniting fireworks, and one person said maybe in the hospital because of fireworks. I hope that's nobody on the show, but that's going to be uh, – that's Scott, that's you? Are you? Are, is it big pyrotechnic show up in uh, Idaho? It is. Yep, yeah. as it should be, as it should be, absolutely. Yeah. And then the final question of the poll today, do you own any apparel with an American flag on it? I almost put on the question, yes, uh, American, you know, blood, red, or red, white, and blue blood through and through, or no, my citizenship is questioned. How can you not have something? With a little, you know, a little flag on it somewhere. I'm not sure how that uh, how that works. Anybody on the show? Was that someone on the show? All yeah. right. Impromptu question though. How many people mm-hmm. on this call own a pair of official Fourth of July slash Memorial Day slash Labor Day New Balance classics? <laughs> I can't say that I do. I bet somebody at Freight Vaughn has got those. You need to check that, Shannon. I when bet somebody's real souls, rocking those. Come standard. We are some <laughs> speaker head. You got those present, Hayden? Can you show those off? Go get them. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back. Oh, I got my safe where I keep them. It's high priority. Yeah, <laughs> dead I'm sure. Yeah, Freyvon is definitely sneakerheads. There's no doubt about that. So uh, we'll wait, wait for him to get back to to, to then, show us these sneakers. Who, who's who's those, add, there add they the are. Text. There they are. Love them. If you can see freshly cut lawn clippings on them, that's part of the character. <laughs> yeah. uh, they do get washed. Obviously, I have you know I have my shoe guy come by and detail them once a week, but. Uh, <laughs> You gotta have some questions. If, if you're tired of your chicken drying out on the grill, your steak's not good. It's overcooked. First of all, you gotta get a towel over the shoulder while you're cooking, and you gotta have these bad boys on. Mm. Easy upgrade. Yeah, you'll never you'll never the miss tongs one. together a couple times. Uh-huh. I yeah. like it. I like it. I think I think Hay needs to do an infomercial on grilling out with uh, with those bad boys. I think it's what we need to see. So I've got videos um, made. I'll send it. Nice. All right, everybody. We've got the word on the street. Top five. I got to come up with a little jingle. We need a jingle like a like a typical you know jingle. But we got the word on the street top five. But this week's word on the street top five is not something that we can show in a graphic like that. We have to use videos for this because it is the top five uh, fireworks videos off of YouTube, everybody. And we've got an actual honorable mention as well. So we're gonna put these up there and then we'll we'll do a quick vote and see what you guys think about this. So first of all, the honorable mention. Take a look. Enjoy. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to shoot an artillery shell. <laughs> That's a firework on the end there. That's going to be, yeah. This is my favorite part. Listen to this. Listen to this. The parent says, can't light it. Give him your cigarette. Give him your cigarette. <laughs> There's no way this is going to go wrong. There's no way. Safety first, everybody. This is OSHA approved. We're good. <laughs> Could you go a little more to the right, please? Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh my goodness. Yeah. So there's uh there's, that's our honorable mention, uh, everybody on this one. So here we go. This is number, number five. Let me pull this up. Let me get to it. Shannon, this is what we do. It's just stupid stuff. Here we go. Number five. This one's a little long. This one's called in the snow fireworks. Check it out. I'm not sure this is a foreign country. Here we go. Shooting off fireworks in the city. The fireworks aren't even getting above the buildings. I love it. But that's just the beginning, everybody. Watch what happens. Here we go. Getting a little crazy. Might be at the finale. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Just seeing people running. And then right there at the end. Oh, uh, that's so okay. So that's number five, everybody. Uh, that looks that looks about what's happened in front of my house. That, that's that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the Boise Idaho one. All right, here we go. This one's called porch diving. Number four. Here we go. <clears throat> everybody sit on the porch and join it. Here it goes. Uh oh, good, Terry. Oh Oh, I just love the fact that the camera was rolling for some of these. It's so good. The guy's running out a little late. That's number that's number four right there. Okay, somebody say back it up, Terry. Did I hear that? Okay, well, I mean, we might get to that one. I don't know. Here's number three. This one's this is called Iceland New Year's Eve fireworks. Here we go. Yay! Just lighten it up. This might be more Boise items. Now this might be what you're talking about right here. <laughs> you're sitting in your back. <laughs> That's the dedication by the cameraman. To stay with it and track it. <laughs> no, you know he's you know he's sitting here like this. Yeah. Oh, Kudos yeah. to, <laughs> to the cameraman on that one for uh, you know sticking with that one. That. Uh, that was pretty wow. intense. Love that one. That was pretty crazy. Okay. That's All right, great. everybody. Number number two. This one's called Fireworks in the Garage. This is a shout out back to our younger days, everybody. Here we go. Oh, no. Wrong one. Hang on. Let me, let me get that one out of there. Sorry. No. Nope. Amateur hour here. Here we go. Amateur hour. Amateur hour. Here we go. All right. <laughs> this is so stupid. Why are you locking the oh, door? No. Here we go. Here we go. Why are you locking? Oh, shit. Hi, I'm Johnny Oh, shit. This is going to suck. Oh, They weren't screaming that. They weren't okay. screaming that. That is All right. natural All right. selection working. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. All right, Hayden, this is for you. This is the number one video, and this might be the best fireworks video of all time. Everyone, it's a backup. Come to a different way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Terry. Bag up, bag up. Bag up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. What the fuck? What you doing, Terry? Terry, what's the one? <laughs> the laugh at the end is the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So oh, the moral Terry. of this story. <laughs> Do, which, which one's our favorite there? So who liked the uh, the, the arrow one at the, at the beginning? Was that number one? No, nobody nobody voted for that one. How about the uh, Icelandic one? The, the snow one? No, no the snow one. How about in the in the in the garage? Anybody in the garage? The no. one on the yeah, street. That, yeah, that, <laughs> that was the pretty good. Was... The the one in the streets, the Iceland one, was going crazy in the streets. Yeah, that, that was, was number three. Was and great. then uh, and then back up Terry. Oh my gosh, that's so how is the stuff. garage one ever going to work out well? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, who decides to light fireworks off with the garage door shut in there? Yeah, garage? I mean, uh, same people that were eating go through to all of the the bad decisions even before we started that thing. <laughs> that's a Darwin <laughs> Award waiting to happen. That yeah. is it. That is. Totally, I'm gonna make yeah. my boys do it. It's yeah, totally Darwin. There was another one I that I saw. I almost, I almost put it on, but there was another one where um, they had put the. You might have seen it. They put all the all the uh, fireworks in a, in a small car, 
and blew up the car and the car was just completely destroyed it was a little white car a little little thing somewhere in europe somewhere but i saw that one i almost put that one on there but okay the moral of the story is everybody have a great weekend with your fireworks don't shoot anything up uh don't uh, don't end up in the hospital or end up getting uh, one of those awards that would be that would be good but it's going to be fun to see some fireworks lit. how many of you guys have a local fireworks display to, uh, in your in your town anybody have oh, yeah. you guys have one of those oh, yeah. yeah pretty uh, good ours all got canceled trey uh and the, the commentary from every city is supply chain issues so thanks for everybody out there it's <laughs> 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 Canceled. Every city, oh. seriously, and I think part of it is is just the dollars aspect of it. But I mean, they are quoting. I mean, out here in Phoenix, you've got four or five shows all canceled for supply chain issues. Uh, well, it's a, it's wow. a good excuse this year, I guess. But uh, yeah, it is yeah. saving them. I mean, the budgets that the budgets that cities spend on these things are pretty pretty massive. Some of them, uh, which is crazy. Now I live in Missouri, where it's super flat. So unfortunately, like you only get to watch the one near you. But when you live somewhere with those some hills and you get up on top of a hill, you can watch them all over town. That's usually the best. But not where I live, unfortunately. Okay, all right. So we're gonna end the show with what we do every week, Shannon. That is this week in pictures. A little fun uh, walk through of what happened this week. Some news stories that went on as well. So we're gonna go ahead and start this out and. Uh, Shannon, you're up first, man. What uh, what do we what do we got here? Talk about this. Yeah, I think so. Hey, so you start a company, right? Your kids have no clue why you, you leave every day and what you really do. <laughs> so we're driving to California to Disneyland last week. We see one drive by, but the kids don't see it. So uh, I actually took the kids by one of our our, our places that uh, we have a lot of our Freight Bona X trailers. They got to take some photos, see what Dad really does. Um, Funny story I would just share real quickly. So my boy doesn't touch anything, but after you go to Disneyland with your kids, you realize they touch absolutely everything. <laughs> and the part, the picture you don't see, and I can share that offline, but he, he actually has trailer grease all across <laughs> his face. And we go to take this picture and my teenager just starts laughing. And I'm like, at first I'm concerned, right? And he has no idea he's got that. He's like, I didn't touch anything. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? like, after watching you for two days in Disneyland and now you've got grease all over your face, I'm almost 100% certain you touched that trailer, son. And he's just, you know, <laughs> and he's embarrassed, he's emotional. So I got some amazing photo reels of him with like trailer grease on his oh, face. Oh, that's so good. Uh, so good. And that was on that our drive back. So. That's the kind of picture you hold for the wedding uh, highlight, you know, slideshow. Uh, that's the yeah. one you hold on to for that. That's going to be epic for that, which is great. And here's another another picture. Tell us about this one. Yeah, that's just my little ones, man. You know, a lot of times people ask about why we do what we do. For me, you know, it's it's about my family, my kids, this journey, um, being able to enjoy those experiences. And I think the cool thing is, is, you know, really promoting people taking the time to enjoy that stuff. So too often we get involved in the grind, we forget about the journey and the why, and so. For me, being able to take the weekend, take those kids, see the face, see the smiles on their faces, getting to go to Disneyland for the first time, riding roller coasters for the first time. It was uh, there. There is no dollar figure for that. So that, that was Dude, that, that was stuff is magical when you're that age. Like, you know, oh, like yeah. the princesses and, and everybody, they're real. All the characters like, oh, my gosh, he's a real. I mean, like we, we took our kids to Disneyland when they were six and four. It was the same thing. I mean, I stood in line for two hours to meet Elsa and Anna. I mean, yep. that's what we do as parents, right? <laughs> Two I, I just went and it was magical for me. So. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine for the kids. No, I mean, it is. It's amazing. And it, it does. It's a good reminder why we do what we do. You got five kids, right? Yep. Uh, is that right? From from what to what? What are the age ranges? 22 to five in a few weeks. Man, you don't look old enough to have a 22-year-old. Get out of here with that. <laughs> the, the older ones are my stepkids, but... Uh... It's uh, All right, an interesting journey. Better explanation because you don't look old enough to have a 22 year old. Let's just <laughs> let's just get that out there. All right, uh, Freight Sensei, what's up, man? What do we got here? Uh, you know, National Logistics Day. We decided to take the whole office to the rage room, so we uh, we raid. Super fun. <laughs> so, so so you uh, just yeah, get to a bunch of axes break thrown, stuff. and then yeah, we just get to break stuff. It's a room. Uh, I believe this picture on the right is a uh, picture of someone smashing a, a vacuum cleaner on a block. So. I wish I was going to send you some videos and pulled up. I uh, they got me a video of me uh, with my awesome golf swing, but I, I slipped and I fell all over. But, <laughs> <laughs> it was great, you know. But it was it was I, fun, I, I, very stress relieving. It was that's exactly what they needed, and they had a lot. Of fun. I didn't know that rage rooms existed, but thinking about it, that's a genius business. Give people a so productive place to go get the get the energy out and get the you know if you have a bad day, just go light up a session. Just full <laughs> office space. Put one in oh, at the Eagles yeah. Stadium. Yeah. The Eagle fans would get so angry. 
<laughs> the Eagles rage room at the end. I'd say it's right by the line on the way out of the, the stadium. That would be uh that'd be genius. Uh, so good. All right, Raquel, what do we got here? I don't know if you're, if you can tell us what's going on here, if you're with us, or maybe I'll just tell uh, Raquel got to go to the headquarters of LDI and do some work with them and take some pictures. So she sent these over. Um, so I'm, I'm doing the, I'm doing the talk through for you, Raquel, unless you can jump in and say something. Can you jump off mute and talk? Uh, car wifi. Uh, <laughs> yeah i don't think it's gonna oh, work out man. okay I'm <laughs> no we can't it's okay it's it's hard to hard to hear you we've already i told him what you did so it's all good uh you're good but you went to ldi's headquarters uh which is uh the the, the brand that they work for uh, an agent of ldi so um pretty cool to see that as well all right as i told you guys last week uh i mentioned that friday i was super excited because saturday was the starting of summer camp for my daughters both gone my wife and i had an awesome vacation weekend together just a huge date we went to see top gun twice y'all we went we went saturday night it was so good we went back tuesday night for the five dollar version and the free popcorn which was awesome uh we went and hit golf balls we went to costco i think i posted that uh we went to costco which uh, that is a date night when you're over 40 and you got kids everybody that is a legit date night uh don't don't throw that one out and we went to the cardinals game they won nine nothing i think on monday night against the marlins so had a phenomenal uh, opportunity to have a little date night which is great oh here's the costco run this is when i feel like i'm most connected to the supply chain is when i'm in the grocery store which is not too often we got to see what was going on there so that was good and then we got a couple of news stories we're going to end on this week so first of all um we had uh some news that health insurance prices are now going to be revealed for the first time to consumers we'll get to see what uh health insurance uh you know what they pay for almost everything which is really interesting pricing transparency is i think a great thing because you know when you go to the hospital and you pay you know four hundred dollars for two advil you know what's going uh -oh. on i know I, I hit the wrong button again this is what we, this is what happens shannon it's amateur hour around here live but tv I, live tv this is how it works but pricing transparency what do you guys think about this yeah i would i think it's amazing well i mean for healthcare, for sure i mean i i got hit this is years ago. I got hit by a car and I had an ambulance take me to the hospital and it ended up being like three grand for seven blocks. I was like, where is all this coming from? Like, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the ambulance, obviously, because it doesn't get used as much, which is a good thing. They have, they have to pay for the technology and the equipment there. So I kind of understand that. But man, it's like Advil, $400, <laughs> 500 bucks for a couple of Advil. Like, come on. You know, like, well, you the, know. the thing is, they have different menus so to speak right like depending on which office you go to and depending on what your insurance provider is i mean there's this is the rate for the insurance insured people and then the insurance company pays really this much but if you come in and you don't have insurance they'll give you something in them it's just make yeah. it all what it should be and then you're it just yeah. always seems so sketchy. Uh, the whole thing, it just seems really, really sketchy. I'd love to see somebody, it would be pretty funny if somebody came to the hospital and their wife was like toting a backpack with like everything they need. You know, there's there's some gauze in there. There's some Advil in there. You know, there's maybe some some scissors to do some work. I don't know. I mean, that'd be pretty funny. Be like, no, I got you right here. We got them. Don't need them. We got, <laughs> I mean, that might be the way. We got to pay for the labor, but we brought the parts. <laughs> That's right. We brought, <laughs> we brought everything we need. Oh, pretty crazy. Energy is a big topic right now with everything that's going on with, with Russia and with oil and with refineries down. So I saw this story. I thought this was interesting. It looks like nuclear is kind of getting a second look, which uh, I think is actually a good thing. I think we need to have an all energy strategy because like if you have windmills, that's great. But if the wind dies a little down a little bit, uh, if, you, if, if there's sun out, obviously solar is great, especially if you're in a place where you get a lot of sun. These are great things to use. But um, I just don't like the fact that we're demonizing some forms of energy and not the others when all of it requires energy to make anyways. And, you know, there's, there's, there's things that go into it like that. There's really no such thing as purely clean energy. Um, and so I, you know, I like the fact that it's on there. What do you guys think about nuclear power? Would you be okay with nuclear power? Yeah. I think as long as the technology is advancing, I mean, it's advanced in so many other areas. I'm, I'm sure that they've made it safer than it, it previously was. So it needs to be done appropriately, but sure. Yeah. Keep you know, trade on the energy front and bring it back to trucking for a sec. I thought, you know, and I, I keep uh, kind of hyping up Rebecca's presentation because I thought it was one of the most interesting ones I've seen in years. She talked about the difference between uh, the actual energy savings between battery operated trucks um, and your standard, um, you know, diesel, diesel trucks. Yeah. And then she gave like the Delta and the Delta is not a complete Delta, right? Because there's so much energy that goes into doing the batteries. But then the interesting piece was through all their studies. The problem is you can haul less weight because of the battery payload, right? And so as you add, so you gotta have more units 
of the, the you had to add more yeah. units to haul the same pay. And so by the time you take the delta and add the units, like the net benefit isn't as I think large um, as everyone would assume it to be like, oh, this is a game changer. Yeah. And I think the second thing I would highlight is I remember early in my career, 2015, Elon was talking heavy about battery operated trucks. Now, Elon has gone on to do some amazing stuff, as people have seen through his his fleets and his cars and obviously have what Tesla's done. But the thing you never hear them talk about or actually deliver on is what thing? Yeah, the trucks. They haven't right. delivered on the trucks yet. Right. And I think there's there's something to be said when the richest guy that really has no rules that's still struggling to deliver that component to the market. That that should tell everybody something seven years later. So just throw that out there while no, you're it's, That's a great point. Uh, speaks it's volumes about that. Speaking of which, we need to is, can we get that presentation somehow? I would love to see that presentation. It's all free, my man. We're, we're, we need to get the link to that. I'll, yeah, we'll get to, I'll send it out so you can send it to people. But yeah, it is, send me a link lot of it. great information on driver, driver hiring, stuff that I'm sharing. Yeah. I, was, I was incredibly impressed about this organization and what they do and and, and, and how much information is out there that I had not been able uh, yeah, to that's understand. Cool. So, yeah, love it. that's awesome. No, we'll definitely get that. Okay, we're over time. So we'll go real quick. It's vacation season. If you're going to Yellowstone, don't get too close. A visitor was injured by getting too close to a bison, but those things are amazing. It's tempting to get up real close to them. Uh, any of you guys been to Yellowstone? I've been there a couple of times. It's great. Man, Gotta it's respect phenomenal. nature. Gotta yeah, respect but nature. it's neat to be that close, but I mean, they're, they're wild animals, right? Gotta be careful, but uh, hopefully people have great, great summer out there seeing some of that kind of stuff. And we're going to end on this story here, kind of a funny one. And that is a woman brought ba a baby and a stash of drugs to a Florida prison visit recently you know sometimes you just can't fix stupid out there people so uh you know whatever's going on out there have a great weekend everybody we appreciate you being on the world on the street this week shannon hope you enjoyed it hope you'll come back and see us again sometime soon for everybody else there that was watching have a great fourth of july enjoy the long holiday and we will see you guys next week for episode 114 we're gonna have matt annis from tafts on the show so we'll see you guys soon. Everybody have a fabulous 4th of July weekend. Thanks, Shannon. See you, bud. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend.